Hello Miko. This is my video contribution to the contest. And let me of course say first happy birthday to you. Even though as far as I understood it um, the actual birthday will be in some weeks. Nevertheless, since my 40th birthday is already six years ago, let me uh, tell you that uh, yeah, from now on everything will just get worse. There will be back pain, there will be the lacking ability to memorize things, uh, the, the legs will certainly get weaker, um, the reflexes not so good. Yeah, and in regards of sex, I mean, you would probably not want to compete with the younger self now. Um, it will not get better in the future. But still, if, uh, if uh, the scientific developments in the field of medicine continue like that, you might just be in the middle of your lifespan. And that's great, isn't it? Um, and... It might not even be the middle. The middle may be just in five years from now or even ten years. So why not? Well, unless a Russian nuclear power plant explodes somewhere somewhere 400 kilometers behind the border of Finland, this could mess up your sort of a statistical position <laughs> significantly. <laughs> but um, I don't want to try to be funny. I don't think this is my strong suit. But um, the topic was 1977, which is a wonderful year for music. A lot of great stuff came out in 1977, I think. So first, I have two MCs here, two cassettes from 1977, just for fun. One of them is Waiting for the Night by The Runaways. That's this one here. And the other one is Book of Dreams by the Steve Miller Band. Yeah, that came out in 1977 too. So now the records. I've already organized them a little bit in a order of uh, from the least favorite to my most favorite. So uh, I will start really quick and uh, kind of work my way through to the real jams. And of course the last album that I will show here is in my regard um, probably the best album recorded in that year. Worldwide, of course. <laughs> So let's start with something crazy. 1977 was the year that saw the uh, David Hamilton, Hamilton softcore uh, movie Bilitis, which came with this uh, cute soundtrack, uh, sort of a today, today you would probably call it easy listening, uh, composed by Francis Lai. So it's a nice novelty recording to have. Um, this one happened in that year, even in the in the quieter moments by Supertramp. Now this album um, seems to be present in every flea market on this planet. I don't know why. Maybe they printed too many of them. Seventy-seven um, also saw uh, the first of the debut album by Mike Bat and his uh, LP. Um, Schizophonia, and um, yeah, I never really, I never really knew what to think of this album. I mean, it's filled with great musical ideas. This is an extremely talented musician and extremely talented uh, artist that came. Uh, I mean, he was extremely, as you can see, he was extremely young when he did this album. I think they kind of tried to make him a new Mike Oldfield, I guess. Um, but it's strangely unfocused, this album. It's, it's it's weird all over the place. So, in a sense, it's interesting to study it, to listen to it, because there are fascinating themes in it. At the same time, it's kind of awkward. Um, this one is pretty cool. War Dance by Colosseum 2. Now, uh, this was 1977. And uh, it's an interesting mixture of... Uh, jazz fusion and basically hard rock. Hard rock because of Gary Moore, of course. Um, at the end of the year, this this uh, lineup basically fell apart. Gary Moore went to play with Thin Lizzy. And Don Airy, the keyboarder that's dominant on this album, um, of course, went to join Rainbow. And... Uh, 
That's an album from 1977, Point of No Return by Kansas. There are still a whole bunch of people on Facebook that fight over the question if this is prog rock or not. I do not care. It's an interesting album, it's, it has a lot of good tunes on it. I have nothing bad to say about it. I even have it here with a 7 inch, of course, with dust in the wind and point of no return on it. So um, I saw them live in 1984-85, I think. I was a young kid then, back then. So Kansas, now going for the one, yes. So this was the famous Yes album that uh, sort of hailed the return of Rick Wakeman behind the keyboards, which, uh, well, in my opinion, is the least <laughs> it's the least pleasant thing about this album. <laughs> I have nothing against Rick Wakeman in general. I, I have actually a lot of Rick Wakeman records, as my next album will show. But um, I always felt that his choice of sounds on this album were a little bit too obnoxious. But it's a great album. It has some amazing songs on it. Uh, I, for example, like Parallels, um, which is uh, a song from this album that usually gets gets a lot criticized on in, in, in YouTube videos. Well, it's a matter of taste. Um, so, um, yeah, going for the one. 1977. And Rick Wakeman made the same year his criminal record. So, um, this is so in the, in the same period of time. Uh, well, it's a good album. Um, there is a lot of Alan White on it and Chris Choir from Yes. So, that makes sense. Um, Camel, Rain Dances. Now, this is a wonderful album. If one is into a sort of a, a focused uh, melodic uh, prog rock. Um, so I always liked it. It's something what, that one can listen to a hundred times without uh, getting bored. And that's always a good thing about an album. Rain Dances Camel. So now we are closing on on really the gems and the epic masterpieces like uh, before and After Science by Mr. Brian Eno. That's a great mixture of sort of a no wave aesthetic combined with. Uh... Well, honestly, it's one of those albums that you really cannot put in a category. It's just, it's just, uh, it's just Eno music outside of the ambient realm, so to speak. And then this album came out. The first Peter Gabriel album. I don't think I need to say a lot about that because this is basically stuff of legends. Um, yeah, it's already uh, it's already um, with Tony Levin on bass guitar. Uh, so uh, and then there is this. <laughs> so Peter Gabriel. So now. Now we're coming to the last three albums that I'm gonna show here. So they are sort of uh, my three favorite albums from 1977. But even they are in a certain order. So first, Iroani Competo by Akiko Yano. This came out in 1977. Great uh, sort of uh, left field uh, record. Um, with uh, interesting songs and a fascinating musical atmosphere. In a sense, this kind of announces the birth of this whole Japanese electropop genre that was about to happen through people like uh, Yellow Magic Orchestra and Ryuichi Sakamoto. Um, so, um, people compare this with Kate Bush sometimes, but this is older than Kate Bush. Not by much, but um, wonderful record. I really love it. Cluster and Eno. Here's Brian Eno again. This time with the German experimental band Cluster. So this was a wonderful album. They recorded in uh, June 1977, of course, in Connie Plank's studio. So this is uh, Stuff of Legends, very ambient -y. Uh, Full of uh, interesting themes, um, and after all these years, it, starts, it still sounds very fresh to me, very enjoyable. 
And now I have only one more record to show. The best album of the year 1977, without any doubt, out of any discussion or debate, was I, Robert by the Alan Parsons Project. Don't let anybody tell you any different, young man. Um, <laughs> so this is, uh, in my opinion, a work of genius. This was Alan Parsons Project's second album. And I know, yes, yes, people always tell me like, yeah, but isn't it more like a guilty pleasure? Are you really serious about that? No, this is actually a masterpiece. I and mean, there is just not a single track on this album that is not intriguing, fascinating, perfect in sound and composition. I mean, Eric Wolfson was really on the roll here. Uh, it has some of the best songs they ever wrote. And uh, it has a great sound. The B-side is also uh, filled with all kind of sort of ambient themes and experimental moments. And um, yeah, people sometimes criticize that uh, the rhythm section uh, is very strongly influenced by the music of that time, by basically a disco sound. But that's what I like about it. Um, I mean, the band was amazing at that time. I mean, there was still the whole uh, the whole pilot gang there with David Payton and Stuart Tosh and Ian Branson on guitar. You had Lenny Zakatek on vocals, Alan Clark, Stephen Harley, and so on and so on and so on. I mean, this is an amazing album. And that's all I have to say about it for now. Actually, I could talk about it for hours, but um, I think people would find it a little annoying. So that's it. I hope it didn't take too long. I tried to be fast actually, but um, this is my video. So once again, happy birthday and um, let's keep it spinning.